Welcome to Day 183 of Shape by the Word. I'm Paul Kemp here with Matthew Kresge and Katie Kresge. And by my calculations, we are halfway through reading the New Testament together Mm -hmm. in community as a church and, of course, as a staff. And uh, even as we read here uh, and record in the studio, it's always encouraging to us to know that we're reading with you Mm -hmm. and enjoying God's Scripture together with you and are being formed and shaped um, by it. So we've been reading you know, through Luke and through Acts and then through Paul's letters, and we've come to a section of his letters called the Prison Epistles, which really show a, a fine depth you know, in Paul's writing. He's writing from a desk where he has far more time. He's chained to a Roman soldier. Mm. Uh, he doesn't know when he will be uh, released from prison, how long he'll be in prison. The process has already taken uh, three years. Uh, you know, for him to get to this point from the time he's left Jerusalem to the time he finally gets into Rome. Yeah. And uh, so we have some of the most beautiful letters from his hands, Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians, Philemon, which we'll explore uh, tomorrow. Uh, but we come to the end of uh, Philippians. And, of course, the church in Philippians was born you know, into controversy as Paul casts a demon out of a young slave girl who was able to predict the future. And after the demons left her, were no longer able to predict the future. And her owners were furious because they cut into her profits. And mm-hmm. the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Paul was put into prison. And, of course, the Philippian jailer was about to take his life, but he ended up giving his heart and life to Christ. And that's the foundation of the church. We have Lydia. We have uh, the Roman jailer and, and possibly a young slave girl, uh, you know, who once, uh, you know, predicted the future through a demon uh, for her masters. So we come to the end, and we hear, you know, the constant theme that we've heard through, you know, Philippians, rejoice in the Lord. Mm. And it's a a nice end to a a really nice letter. Before we uh, read chapter 4, let's do as we always do. Let's offer ourselves in this moment to the Lord. Matt, do you mind lifting us up with the word of prayer? Father, thank you uh, for this time together. Um, what What a grace it is to be able to read. Um, your word as the people of God together um, mm-hmm. through the means of podcast and um, and through video. Father, would you strengthen our hearts, um, strengthen our minds? Would you cause in us um, to arise a, a great contentment in who you are and what you've done and in our circumstances? Um, Father, help us to rejoice, to be people who are marked out by um, our rejoicing in you. And, and God, would you get glory through it? We love you. Uh, be with us as we read. Um, give us wisdom. Transform us through it. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. You have to love the opening verse of this chapter, and uh, you can feel deeply the passion that Paul has uh, for these believers in Christ. Mm-hmm. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you, my love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way. I plead with Yodi and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I've learned to be content in whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living plenty or want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I've received full payment and have more than enough. I'm amply supplied now that I've received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. 
their fragrant offering and acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings. All God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. It's kind of a nice little note of triumph in that final greeting Mm -hmm. that uh, the brothers and sisters who are here in Rome send greeting, and many of them are part of Caesar's household, Mm -hmm. or at least some of them are part of Caesar's household. So the gospel has made inroads to those who are serving Paul and to those who are taking care of Paul and to those who are interacting with Caesar to the highest echelons Mm -hmm. of the Roman government. So it's just kind of a nice little note of triumph as we yeah. see yeah. Paul sitting there in chains. Especially uh, in light of, you know, we read through the book of Acts and you get to the end of Acts and we've, we kind of tease the question like, will Paul ever make it to Rome? And then he finally gets there and, you know, he, he ends with that note that's, you know, although Paul's in chains, you know, the gospel remains unchained, you know, and here it is unchained throughout yes. the very place where Paul's uh, supposed to be unhindered. chained. Unhindered. Yeah, unhindered. You know, which is a you know, beautiful word, even though Paul himself, you know, obviously when he envisioned going to Rome, didn't envision, you know, years of imprisonment and shipwreck and uh, torturous trials all the way along, being, uh, you know, tormented by the Jews and uh, everything that happened, but he did go to Rome and he finds himself Mm -hmm. in a position where he otherwise probably could not have taken the gospel into the very heart of the emperor's household. Yeah, Mm -hmm. which Which is kind of gives new meaning to Philippians 4.13, right? I can do all things yeah. through him who gives through him strength. Who gives you strength. That's one we <laughs> usually take out of context. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, usually the context is, you know, this is this is my life first. I'm about to go out there and play this volleyball game, and I know that we're underdogs by 472 points, but yeah. we can do everything through Christ who gives us strength. And it's not that you don't bring you know that kind of strength you know to your volleyball game or your basketball game or frisbee right. golf for that matter. That sometimes <laughs> it's called this. Um, so, oh, is that what it's called? <laughs> Get with the times. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. how nice of you to correct That's me on that point. So, when so I'm trying offensive. to lead you deep into yeah. the gospel, you get defensive and you kind of just push back. But anyway, that's Matt Kresge, and you guys are getting to know this him a little, little bit. But I have learned the difficult task of being content, yeah. which God has called me to through the one who gives me strength. And of course, he said, I know what it's to be in plenty and want. And in other places, he describes as being in one as being destitute, going without food, mm-hmm. being cold, uh, you know, suffering, you know, mm-hmm. shipwreck. So the range of where he's learned to be content is far beyond the range that most of us will ever be called to experience. But uh, that is the source of his hope and his peace, that whatever his circumstances, it's not the circumstances that shape his life, it's. Christ who gives him strength, yeah. who shaped the moment, who well, shaped the circumstances. And, and I love in that passage, you know, as he's he's talking to them about his needs and, you know, I've learned the secret to contentment, you know, whether it's in abundance or, you know, lack thereof, like I, I am content in the Lord for he's the one who, you know, gives me strength. And then he goes on to say, for even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than, more than once when I was in need. You know, that one of the means in which God has strengthened Paul is through the believers who sent aid. And then he goes on in verse 19 and says, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. You know, there, there's the secret. You know, if you, we back up, it's, Mm -hmm. it's not just this, you know, God will strengthen me to do whatever I want to do. It's, he will strengthen us in the riches of Christ Jesus. And and that's another verse we very much take out of context. Mm -hmm. You know, that, um, you know, regardless what, you know, happens, God is going to enrich me in every way. And the context here is, as you have emptied yourself for the sake of the gospel, uh, you're never at a loss because God will always meet your needs Mm -hmm. according to his riches. And, of course, that's a big part of the context, you know, of Paul when he speaks about, you know, generosity. It's always as you... Uh, generously give away the things that God has given to you. God will continue to generously give you much more than that, not just uh, material wealth, which may or may not come as a result, mm-hmm. but deep spiritual wealth. And, and of course, when he speaks about all your needs, he's talking about taking care of every bit of who you are in Christ Jesus. But beyond that, giving you extraordinary grace in Christ. I feel like the closest that we've that we, us three, have gotten to what Paul has experienced is our ice apocalypse moment, <laughs> right? Or, or some people called it snowvid in our community group last night. <laughs> um, and 
I saw in myself and many of the women in our um, community group we were talking last night, they felt in themselves just this deep discontentment with the circumstance and wanting to complain, wanting to um, be bitter and negative. And, um, and that's not even close to what he's experienced. But for us, in, in losing those things that we've grown so accustomed to, um, to see how we naturally lean when that does, when we do lo- lose those things, I think it's um, hugely convicting. And it, it's such a reminder in those moments to turn towards him and um, to, to learn to be content in, what, in who he is. Mm-hmm. Not much deeper than that. And of course, we have brothers and sisters, even when you think about, you know, the uh, church plants that we've done, you know, in Guatemala yeah. and in, in Nigeria. Uh, these are commonplace events, you know, for them. Yeah. Neither one of those in those climates ever get cold, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they do go without most of the things, you know, that we count, mm-hmm. you know, as necessities. So they lose power yeah. grid all the time. And some of them are not even on a power grid to begin with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we need to remind, it, you know, Paul will say later this week as we're going through Timothy that uh, our contentment begins when we have food and clothing. <laughs> you know, and of course we have come to expect so much more in the way that you know the way that we live. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of you know beautiful you know sections in this. You know, obviously uh, you have uh, uh, you have Paul's exhortation in a rejoice in the Lord in verse uh, four Mm -hmm. always I'll say it again rejoice let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God and the peace of God or the shalom of God which transcends all of our understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus and of course this is a good test you know for what we have been through Mm-hmm. You know, if we're panicking, it means we're looking at our circumstances. If we are at peace, it means we are looking at the one who holds our circumstances. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, he's quoting, you know, from Isaiah here, where um, Isaiah promises to the nation of Israel in the middle of exile, not in the middle of, you know, uh, the best and, and the greatest, mm-hmm. you know, moments of Israel, but in the middle of them going into exile, uh, that the Lord will keep in perfect peace those who minds are steadfast because mm-hmm. they trust in him mm-hmm. and paul is saying the very same thing here that if we're looking to god rather than looking to ourselves or looking to our circumstances or looking to those around us we can know god's shalom which is mind-blowing it's mm-hmm. beyond anything we could possibly understand mm-hmm. and, and obviously it's also the best testimony of the gospel that we can live and walk in peace and contentment in the middle of adverse yeah. you know circumstances I love to, you know, he he calls us, you know, to, to pray, and then he immediately moves to that next section and then, you know, calls us to think on things that are worthy and noble. You know, and, and sometimes it's, I think we might just use our, our prayers and think, okay, that's it, and then go back and just think however we want to think. And Paul says, you know, we don't just pray with our hearts and do whatever we want with our mind. We pray with our hearts and our minds. You know, the, 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 these things have to be involved. You know, what, what are we thinking on? What, what are the promises we're holding on to? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's been reminding them of that. You know, hold on to the gospel. Consider the gospel. Rem, you know, mm-hmm. have the same mindset as as Christ Jesus. And and I love you know what he does there. Do not be anxious about anything, but pray. And as you're praying, think on those things that are that are worthy. It's one of the means that God uses to guard your hearts and your minds. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about it. You know, Paul you know, spoke of in his letters to the Corinthians, taking every thought captive yeah. and making it obedient to Christ. And, and this is part of it when we find ourselves, you know, going to dark places to come back and to remember, you know, what is really true, what is really noble, what is, mm-hmm. you know, truly right, what is pure, what is lovely what is admirable, what is excellent. Mm -hmm. In other words, exceeds all other things and praiseworthy. And by the time you finish with that list, the only thing that really fits into that category, you know, is not a nice picture of cats that you have hanging on your wall. The only thing that really fits in that category is the gospel and is Christ Jesus himself. himself. And you have to love, you know, if you're doing inductive studies or underlining and, I mean, you'll, you'll see, you know, when he says, to pray, he closes it with, you know, and the peace of God. And you get that peace of God, you underline there, and then you get the end, he says, and you think on these things, you know, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen to me, and you apply those things, put it into practice, the God of peace will be with you. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so this, the peace that God gives, 
you know, it comes from the God of peace. It's mm-hmm. not separate. It's not two different things. I mean, he's, I love how he just ties those passages no, I do too. together. I, I'm, I'm drawn to, you know, verse nine, the gifts of the gospel, you know, what you've learned, what you've received, what you've heard. And then I love this, what you have seen in me. Mm-hmm. And it's not just something we teach in a classroom. It's something we live, mm-hmm. you know, in a personal relationship with each other. I uh, put it into practice. Mm-hmm. And the God of peace. One more time we hear that. His shalom mm-hmm. uh, will be with you. Well, um, we used to call this uh, podcast 15 Minutes in the Word, but because we could never contain ourselves or refrain ourselves to 15 minutes, we called it Shaped by the Word, but we have (laughs) done our 15 minutes. So, Katie, why don't you close us in prayer? Father, thank you for for the peace that we can find in you, but that not only do we get... um, your peace given freely to us, um, but we get you. And you are the source of all good things. And and so would you fix our eyes and hearts and our affections on you? Um, and we are so often um, prone to focus on um, those things around us and panic um, and worry, find ourselves being so anxious we can barely function. And so would you... Um, help us to to trust you with those things help us to come to you with those things and um, fill our hearts and minds with the things of you um, and and continue to shape us Holy Spirit you are good it's in Christ's name we pray Amen